Welcome back. I'm Pastor Cap. This is your weekly devotional. So I've been studying through the book of Galatians this week and it got me on an interesting topic, which is fellowship, which led me over to 1 John. Now, when you think of the word fellowship, there are a couple different things that might be going through your head. You have my sword. And you have my bow. And my yeah, that's a pretty good one, actually. That's actually closer to the truth than you might believe. In John chapter 1, uh, we're going to talk about that just a little bit. It says this, This is the message we've heard from him and announced to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness. There's our first point right off the nose. God is light and in him there is no darkness. So if you're curious about whether or not you are following God, you do have to consider whether you are going down a path of light or down a path of darkness. Now he's going to describe a little bit about what that means, so don't switch away yet. It says this, if we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and we don't practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. So fellowship and the way that we walk, of course, choosing to live a life that is not sin-filled, but sin-free, gives us fellowship not only with the Father that we found there in verse 2, but also with other believers that we're finding down here in verse 5. He goes on, and this is the part that kind of can catch you if you're not careful. It says this, if we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking you would never say that about yourself, that you're this sin-free person. Yet I know if you're anything at all like me, you want people to believe or see you in a positive light. And so you don't talk about your own personal sins very often. And when we do, there is an uncomfortability with it. I want to encourage you this week to share that part of your life with someone else that is of the faith, not so that you can separate yourself from them, but so you can increase your fellowship with them. Let's finish the passage. He goes on. He says, if we confess our sins, he, God, is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. All he's asking for is confession. Stop hiding the fact that you're not a perfect person. Not just hiding it from other people, but from God himself. That's encouragement number two. If you have not yet spent time this week in your prayer closet confessing your sins to the Father, I encourage you to do that because he has the ability to cleanse us from all forms of unrighteousness. The last section of the pericope says this, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him, that's God, a liar and his word is not in us. You know the way Christ put it when he was in this crowd and they were ready to stone this woman for adultery and he looked at the crowd and says, you who are without sin cast the first stone, right? That's pretty much how I read this passage here. If we claim to be without sin in our lives or in a situation, then we are actually making God a liar and we're not possessing that word in us. So if you want fellowship with the Father, if you want fellowship with one another, then you must be willing to confess your sin, not only to each other, but to the Father himself. So he can cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, I hope this passage has been as encouraging to you as it has been to me. I pray you take it to heart as I am attempting to do. Well, God bless. I'll see you next week.